All right, welcome back to another episode of The Real Estate Junkies. I'm Nick Zigich with the Prominent Capital Advisors, the real estate broker right here in Morovia. And why are you watching this? Because there's a good whole bunch of good knowledge about real estate. And today we're talking about insurance. Insurance again, but on a very different topic. Today with me in the studio, my buddy and uh, agent owner of AMS Insurance. Mark, Mark Wu. Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Good to see you again. It's good to be back. All right. So we're talking about something since the insurance is such a field of all kinds of things that they are there. We couldn't actually bulk everything because everybody's head would blow up with all the stuff. So we're going to be talking about today about some claims. Claims. Now, you got an insurance policy. You bought it because you want to be protected. And now you're about to use it. And one of the things that most people think of is... Should I use it every time? Should I not use it every time? When do you use a claim? That is good. Well, many times, as you know, people like to just file claims for any reason and they, they like, so they just call it in. And probably that's not a very good thing to do because insurance companies don't want multiple claims. They're here to make a profit as well. So really, insurance should be used for the major events and disasters that happen in one's life. Sure. What is a good example of something that you shouldn't use a claim for? Say your deductible is $1,000 and you had a little fire loss and it cost $1,200. You are going to get $200 back from the insurance company. Right. And more than likely, your rates are going to be raised anyways. And so the monetary value of what you got back versus what you're going to pay in increased premiums is not going to pay for itself. Sure. So that makes sense. So let's go on the things that you definitely should use your policy and how to do it. Steps of filing a claim. Absolutely. And stuff like that. Well, liability is something that we often recommend to file a claim on because you don't know if a liability claim, such as a dog bite, a slip and fall on your property, is going to explode from a minor dollar amount to a major one. So that is something that's often recommended to do. But for, for smaller claims that are within $1,000 of your deductible and all that, I often advise my clients to think twice about filing a claim. Sure. The process of so filing... Well, you mentioned that before we go to the process. You advise your clients. So what I read here, it's wise to talk to your insurance agent before filing a claim. Absolutely. <laughs> As their right. insurance representative, I have to um, encourage them to file a claim. But I also try to educate them on the claims process and what a filing a claim does. Because in the industry, as you file multiple claims, oftentimes across the board, companies will non-renew you sure. or your premiums are going to be erased. And so that, that's going to have an adverse effect for each uh, homeowner. Having a good agent and trusting him is obviously key to that process. Absolutely. Okay. So we're back into the process. What do I do? Well, the claims process goes like that. First of all, make sure that your property and all is safe and that you're safe. So. Um, Second process to do is take an inventory of all the damage versus the non-damage uh, items in the home. Uh, take videos, take digital pictures, document, document, document. The third process, they Would that be before or after filing the claim? Both. both. First, they want to document the inventory that they have, but after the claim is, they want to just make sure that they are, are taking pictures of the damage area and that would include if the carpet is damaged and all that, not just tossing it away, or if the pipes burst, not tossing the, the pipes away. Right, they right. want to take pictures of the damage before and, and, and after if they fixed it. And then they want to have a conversation with their agent to see if it's prudent for them to file the claim. The agent will then put them in touch with the claims adjuster. And that claim adjuster is going to be the owner's uh, homeowner's best friend. They're going to okay. walk them through the whole process evaluate the circumstances and determine whether or not there's uh, coverage afforded. Okay, so when you're talking about different uh, things, I do remember, uh, and we'll talk about theft uh, later, but we take, well, I read somewhere, so we took pictures of everything in the house in case of theft so that we have pictures, serial numbers and stuff like that. So with, within that, would you recommend that being done too? Does it help? It always helps to, like again, documentation. Uh, the best documentation anybody can have is a receipt or a bill of sales. Okay. All right. But if they don't have that, what I often recommend, especially for things such as a stereo or appliances or uh, computers, whatnot, 
TV sets, right. is to take the back, take a digital camera and take the picture of the serial number and the model number and all that. That is oftentimes helpful. Unfortunately, when it comes in jewelry and all that, mm -hmm. it is too difficult from a picture to determine whether you're dealing with something that's a replica or something that's authentic and the grade of the jewelry. So that has to have a praised appraisal. So obvious. Oh, so there is. <laughs> That's a good one. See, I never thought of that. And I'm sure a lot of people didn't. Now, you're, you're filing a claim. Uh, what are the consequences now that you might be facing when filing a claim? Multiple claims actually hurts a, a, a owner, right? From the standpoint of they are reported, each of the, the major insurance uh, providers report claims to something called the CLUE report which stands for the Comprehensive Loss Underwriting Exchange. This is a report that each industry insurance company uses to gauge the risk factor of an individual client. So by filing multiple claims, a homeowner places themselves in a jeopardy, whereas, again, the policy, best case scenario, gets raised for several years. Right. Worst case scenario, they're gonna have a very challenging time finding insurance elsewhere because companies do not like uh, clients that, that file multiple claims in a, any given three year right. period. So we'll limit ourselves here in the conversation to people that file good claims, the ones that they should uh, file for. And assuming that there is, you know, uh, I don't know how many in average people do uh, file, <laughs> I've never filed a claim, but uh, what are the consequences when you do file a regular claim regardless? You know, you, you, you're entitled to it, you, you want to, encourage people to file claims when they're, they're right. That is correct. So what are the consequences of those? Well, there's not really a good claim in, in terms of the industry standards, but a good claim to file, for instance, is when you have a major loss because right. you really don't have a choice as a homeowner. You should file that claim. And as I alluded to as well, liability claims are something that, that you should not take the risk of, of not filing a claim Absolutely. because you don't know if those are going to explode. All right. Um, so one of there, the key ones, all, anything to do with liability. But when there is a natural disaster, mm -hmm. oftentimes those claims are not uh, a strike against a policyholder, such as when we had the brush fires in Arcadia Hills about uh, 10 years ago, or when wind comes through or, or you know, causes mass destruction. Those type of claims are called cat catastrophes, and those are not held against a client. Okay, great. So generally, we shouldn't overdo it. That you should correct. be smart about it. Absolutely. We should consult a professional to see how and whether we should do about it because of the uh, sense in making a claim or not. That is correct. So why don't you just summarize it real quickly and the, the, the steps and we can check out. That is correct. Well, again, once you own a home, you should be, you know, your home is your prized possession. You have insurance there in case disaster strikes. And our recommendation always is make sure that when you file a claim that you have a good conversation with your insurance agent so that you can make an informative decision whether or not to file a claim. When it comes to that decision to file a claim, then have your insurance agent walk you through the claims process so that you are not left alone hanging and the insurance agent can help you go through the coverages yeah. and what potentially may or may not be covered and he will put you in touch with the claims experts, which is your claims adjuster. You will have to have your friend, your friend <laughs> in the claim, and actually they are your yeah. friend because if there's coverage there that they can afford out, then they will provide that coverage because they have to abide by the, the policies and the, the, the verbiage of the policies and what is not and what is covered. Excellent. Mark, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, and I'll I'm see glad you again to be here. On other things about insurance, and there's so much to talk, but we don't want to overwhelm everybody with this. I'll see you next time then. You have watched another episode of The Real Estate Junkies. We covered claims, how to do them, when to do them, if to do them, and I hope you've learned something about claims, but definitely see your insurance agent about any claims you would make. So until next time on The Real Estate Junkies, Nick Zigich. Oh, 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 oh,